This station will cover basic installation procedures for IGT machines. IGT produces many different styles and models of gaming machines and video lottery terminals. For simplicity, we will only be using three different models for this presentation. And the subjects we'll cover in this presentation are site preparation, stand preparation, machine installation, external connections, and a functional check. And the three machines we'll be using in this presentation are the Player's Edge Plus, the S-Slot Plus, and the Player's Choice VLT. Also available are slant top machines. They come in video and real configurations. In this segment, we're going to cover site preparation. The first thing we'll cover is a stable platform. You must have a stable platform so that your machines don't have a tendency to tip, especially over on your customers. So what you need to do is make sure that the machines will not rock back and forth. The next subject we'd like to cover is adequate power. I'm going to give you some examples of adequate power. Five machines per 20 amp breaker on 110 volt circuitry or eight machines per 20 amp breaker with 220 volt circuitry. The next subject I'd like to cover is conduit for data communications. These data communications can be fiber optics, electronic communication, or phone communications. You need to make sure that the conduit is installed prior to installing the machines so you don't have to move your machines back out once you have everything in place. You also need to make sure that the ceiling is going to be tall enough for any signs or progressive systems you are going to be installing. In this segment, we will cover stand preparation. In most cases, IGT will provide stands, but if you decide that you'd like to build your own stands, IGT will provide detailed drawings. The next subject I'd like to cover is templates. Templates are available from IGT through your field service representatives. There is also a template provided within the field service manual. If you are going to do a lot of machines, more than five, let's say, it might be advisable for you to use a template to go on ahead and drill the holes in the stands. If you're going to do a small amount of machines, you can center up the machines and mark the holes and go on ahead and drill them from there. If you decide not to use a template, we will go through a short procedure here to show you just exactly how you can mount the machine without one. The first thing you need to do is center the machine on the stand using a tape measure. Just measure one side and then the other. Make sure that they're even. Then make sure the back of the machine is flush with the back of the stand. Once you've done that, you can then open the machine, remove the tray, remove the hopper, once you have the machine centered on the stand, then you can go on ahead and mark the holes that you're going to use to mount the machine. There's one located here, the next one behind that, the next one in the far corner, and the next one up in this corner. The holes are similar on the Edge Plus and on the VLT. Then you can outline the holes for the drop and the cord to provide for coin entry into the stand and for the cord. Once you have done that, you can then remove the machine from the stand, drill the holes where you've marked them, and drill the large holes for the drop and the cord the hole for the drop must be at least three inches. If it is any smaller, coins will have a tendency to catch on the edges and jam up, and what will end up happening is the machine will actually fill up with coin. The hole for the cord can be approximately one and a half inches. You don't want to go any smaller because the cord won't fit through. It can be larger though. It won't be any problem. In this segment, we're going to be covering machine mounting onto the stands. 
Once you have drilled the stand properly, you can then lift the machine onto the stand and bolt it down. The bolts for this are provided in a package in each and every machine that comes from IGT. Once you've aligned the machine properly, you can then take the bolts and drop them into their respective holes. Use all four holes. Make sure that you do this because if you're pulling on the machine and somebody pulls on the handle real hard, they can damage the stand or the machine if only three bolts are used. Once the bolts are properly installed and tightened using a half inch wrench or a half inch socket and ratchet or nut driver, how, whichever you prefer, you can then go on ahead and install the locks. The locks are not provided by IGT. It is up to the customer to provide their own locks. If necessary, you can refer to the field service manual for applications of your locks. The tools required to drill your stand will be a 3 8 inch half horsepower drill motor, a 3 8 inch drill bit, a one and a half inch hole saw or auger, and a three inch hole saw. The tools that will be needed to mount your machine to the stand will be a one half inch socket and ratchet or a half inch wrench. In this segment, we're going to be talking about the external connections to the machine. The first being power, the second being fiber optic. So starting with this machine here, we'll start and by opening the door and removing the tray, setting it aside, removing the hopper, setting it aside, removing the power cord from the hopper itself. You'll find the power cord rolled up inside. The next thing you'll do is you'll make sure that the power switch is turned off. And then you're going to take the cord and you will feed it down through the holes that have already been drilled in the stand as we talked about earlier. Down through and then get the other end and plug it into the filter assembly. Once you've done that, you can reach down inside the stand and pull the cord on through. Once the cord is through, remove the bottom panel inside, place it aside, route the cord through the hole provided, and out the back or the side wherever your power strip is located. And once you've accomplished that, put the panel back inside and you are done with the 110 or 220 volt connection as needed for your particular application. Now before you plug in the machine, make sure that the power strip that you are going to use has the proper amperage rating and it has some form of circuit breaker built into it. 